My name is Dyshawn Mills and I'm a pastor here in Charlotte, North Carolina. My name is Kara Garrity and I am GCS Development Coordinator. All right. Hi, my name is Dyshawn Mills and I'm leading a church planting team in Charlotte, North Carolina. And my mentee is Kara Garrity. My name is Kara Garrity. I am a member of GCI Seal Creek in North Carolina, USA. And my mentor for a number of years now has been Pastor Dyshawn Mills. One of the quirks that Kara has is that she is terrified of critters. I mean, absolutely terrified. Not just like, ooh, 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 ooh. I mean, like running out the front door, running halfway down the street, terrified of critters. That's not right. And I think I've shown a lot of restraint by never using that knowledge to my advantage. That is true. You know, one of the, the things that I think is most hilarious is he has a number of really ridiculous pet peeves. He <laughs> doesn't like crunchy cookies. He thinks they should be called uh, crappy instead to distinguish between soft and crunchy cookies. Something that Kara cannot live without is reggaeton. A lot of people don't know this about her, but she cannot live without that beat. He doesn't like bumper stickers on cars. <laughs> he thinks funny hats are um, terrible <laughs> and should not be worn, and you will never see him in a funny hat. Yeah. In fact, yeah, it's so true. One of the times that she was most <laughs> upset with me is in our conversation. It came up that I did not know who Daddy Yankee was, <laughs> who Daddy Yankee was, who Daddy Yankee <laughs> was, and so that I'm led crying. to some required musical listening on my part if I wanted our relationship to continue. Two of the things that I would love to see <laughs> you right. try to live without is uh, spices. That's what mm. he likes to cook. Mm. And so to see him try to have to cook without spices, I think would be hilarious. Yeah. And then the other thing, <laughs> he's a hip hop head. Mm. So to have to see him live without that old school hip hop, <laughs> man, I think he would, I think he would struggle yeah. living without that. So thankfully I did those assignments. We're still friends to this day. But it was a close call. But for all these 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 quirky things, you know about about Pastor D, I think he would do real real good in the zombie apocalypse. Mm. You know because you. yeah, first of all, he's from Jersey. Second, in the Five Voices, he's a primary pioneer voice. He can talk his way around anything, and so I'd give him like two weeks, two weeks into the zombie apocalypse, and he'd have convinced half those zombies to be working for him. He'd have them organized, getting stuff done. So, so I would want to be on his team for the zombie apocalypse. I, th I think he'd, I think he'd do, he'd do all right. Something to admire about Caro that I don't think I've quite told her yet is her commitment to justice. And in fact, she, has had a, a big influence on me about how I approach ministry because she has woven together justice and ministry in beautiful ways. And I'll be forever grateful to her for teaching me about that. So in a nutshell, that's 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 Pastor D. That um, that's that's my mentor. <laughs> Zombie apocalypse extraordinaire. <laughs> Th that is the nicest compliment. Anyone's ever given me. I, like, I'm saying. Thank you so much for oh, seeing you're that. Welcome. You're That's welcome. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I also love how you were like, these are the things you can't live without. And I was like, I'd love to see him live without these things. <laughs> that would be excellent. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see me suffer yes. and like cry out? <laughs> That's oh, terrible. <laughs> Well, I typically don't like to compliment her because <laughs> it just encourages more negative behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, but Kara is just a rock star. Um, first of all, she has a deep faith in God that for her needs to be lived out. It's not something that... Um, she just wants to internally transform. Um, she recognizes that, or I'm gonna say you, I'm gonna talk to you. You recognize that um, that faith needs to be lived out. And 
you have been tremendous in not having there be separation between your your life with God and your your walking your ministry. Um, so I think that's that's um, a big thing and a willingness to listen and learn uh, to listen and learn, um, which I think is essential in a mentor mentee relationship but also the willingness to search yourself to say, well, I, I think I think something different about this. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's incumbent upon me to create space for that. Um, and I think the last thing is that we, were, we are compatible in how we talk to each other. So I can often be direct in my feedback mm -hmm. um, and sometimes pointed in my questions, not from a place of trying to make you feel bad or, or anything like that. Um, it comes from a desire to really talk about what's happening and what's going on. And you were willing to go to that place and not see what I'm, how I'm presenting myself or how I'm asking or what I'm saying to you as an attack, but you saw that where I was, where I was coming from. Um, and so I think there is a compatibility issue with a mentor-mentee relationship mm -hmm. that is important. Um, we often would joke, um, and this is new to folks who are watching, we would often joke that we get along so well as mentor and mentee because no one else would have us, right? <laughs> like, I was like, mentees they just wouldn't be able to handle me right and and no other mentor would be able to handle you mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um that's not really true but it, to a certain extent it, there is it does speak to the truth that there is a compatibility issue that was important for our relationship yeah yeah absolutely yeah. and i think that does speak to in mentoring there's not not everybody can mentor everybody or right. be a mentee of everybody right and there are um some things that I think made you a good mentor for me. Yeah. And I think like that communication piece, but also um, I think that's alongside that, that like we just were okay. Um, I guess I felt like I had the space to be like more fully me because I, I think we've seen the world or experienced or maybe like we're okay with things not being like super cute and pretty all the time, like yes. puppies yes. and rainbows. Yes. So that's where like, okay, you can say something like, straight up and not beat around the bush mm -hmm. and i'm like okay cool that's fine mm -hmm. or like i can say that and you're like all right like bet it's all it's all good um and so i think that was helpful because in the mentoring space like i'm i'm learning and i'm exploring and so i don't feel like i have to in that learning and exploring hold back because yeah. i can say yeah. what i'm really thinking or what i'm really questioning um so i think that was one thing but i think also um and i love that you mentioned this in uh, the video earlier that um, you also shared a, a care and a passion for the intersection of faith and justice yeah, yeah. because for me being mentored I really think that's a huge part of my calling mm -hmm. and so to have a mentor that creates space for like yes and that can speak to that and mentor um, that aspect of who God is calling me to be I think like to have a mentor that was like, I don't understand this. Like, I don't think that's or like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> it's a whole aspect of like what I believe to be my calling in this season of life that would have went un, like unformed, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that that's a, a huge um, piece there and that you were willing to kind of um, allow us to think outside the box a little bit, even in how we created those spaces for me to learn and explore yeah. um, some of those areas of, of what it looked like to live out um, ministry in the context of th that intersection of faith and justice and what does it look like to live out the gospel kind of in the margins of our community and things like that. So I think those mm -hmm. are two um, really important things that made you a good mentor for me, yeah. um, especially at that season and now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and just reflecting on what you just shared, I think there's a mutuality. God does all things well. And I think he prepared you for me and me for you. Um, the the mentor-mentee relationship is never just one direction. So I needed you at the same point that you needed me. Um, 
and I think God acquits me for it. So like when you're like, yeah, I think I want to explore ministry in, in strip clubs to, to women who are um, dancers in strip clubs. Um, there was no part of me that was like, whoa, that's heavy. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, man, let's, right. let's, let's learn what, what God does in spaces like that, mm -hmm. right? And, and how he shows up and how we can participate in that. And so I know for other folks that might have been very disconcerting, mm -hmm. but um, God brought me to a place where I found that exciting. And yeah. um, I found that um, something that not only I could support you in, but I can learn from as you learn. We could learn about it together. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And to the point, not even just, um, like we joke of like, oh, so wild, you're the only one that could have been my mentor. And there were pieces like that, I think, that that were true. And not every mentor could have been like, oh, I want to explore this aspect of ministry. But I think also when you began mentoring me, my season of life was also a little tumultuous. Yeah, and yeah. there was a, an aspect where um, I think you had qualities and life experience where like you weren't afraid of that. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all, there was more than once <laughs> as an intern, I showed up late to service just because my life at that time was so chaotic. Mm -hmm. And so some mentors would have been like, that's it, and not given me the, the chance to continue. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I think you um, created a space that was different where you weren't kind of afraid of the mess that I was living in mm. and was able to both hold me and, and kind of um, challenge me to that growth and higher standards without yeah. um, demanding that perfection mm -hmm. in that season of life that I was very incapable of. Yeah, yeah, so, that's good. Yeah. There's not like a lot of other relationships quite like it. And so um, for me, that's only something God could do. Mm. Um, and I know that my answers are, are kind of general and vague, but um, it's hard to zoom in on something that is just bathed in mm. God's presence. You might have a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends on what you think is better. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say like I've experienced God in our mentoring relationship through the ways that um, like I've experienced that growth and transformation because God does meet us in, in relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I think um, that has been a, a gift to me that I don't think, um, you know, other people could have mentored me in the same way or at other seasons of life or whatever. So I, I think I've experienced his presence in that way. Um, I think like if I were to say one particular event or moment or if I were to say like one culminating event of like mm -hmm. oh this represents kind of those pieces of transformation or whatever like being mentored by you and um, getting to, to serve in ministry alongside you I'd say the Kaleidoscope Festival that we did yeah, in, yeah. Um, in, in our uh, congregation in Waltham because I um, for me, it was like kind of that moment where we got to, with the folks in our congregation, um, in our community, do something like really cool yes. that I think was reflective of, um, and for, for me, the things that are important to me in ministry and then coming alongside with the folks in our congregation, um, the ways that they can contribute according to their giftings. And it was really the first like big ministry project that I was given um, as a pastoral resident, like mm -hmm. that leadership over. And then when I graduated the program, um, the first time as assistant pastor, really the first like, this is the ministry that, yeah, that, I, yeah. that I led. And so to, um, I don't know, to like to the idea that like, I couldn't have done that, right? If <laughs> I would have shown up late, I would have been like, where's this paperwork? Who's volunteering? Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. Um, without, without that mentorship. So I think like that would be that one space that like I really felt God's presence in those um, kaleidoscope events. Um, but it was because of like the product of that mentorship. Yeah, yeah. That, that was just a <clears throat> unique kind of joy for me. Um, seeing you operate in your ministry gifting, mm -hmm. um, leading other people and setting a high quality of, uh, of excellence for yourself and for what you were leading um, and that I didn't have to do it. <laughs> like I, I, didn't, I didn't have to do that yep. work. Mm -hmm. that, that was um, a unique pleasure. Um, and even before then, when you would speak and give messages, even though I knew we would have to talk about it after, mm -hmm. 
you fed me. I, I was just so blessed. And, and I know not every mentor-mentee relationship has preaching in it, right? But ours did. Seeing God move through you. You know, when you get close to somebody, you can see when there's a transition where, okay, that's not quite Kara mm -hmm. anymore. That's something more, someone more. Um, those moments were, were truly beautiful for multiple reasons. One, I was just blessed by you and, and, and to watch, but it was also confirmation for me as your mentor of God saying, no, this is, I'm doing this, mm -hmm. right? And, and I'm, I'm asking you to participate in what I'm doing in Kara's life, but um, yeah, yeah, I'm here. And, and for me, that was incredibly reassuring mm -hmm. um, because who am I to be entrusted in any way with God's daughter, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's a big deal, but for him to show up and be like, I'm here, I got this, Daishan. Um, yeah. just, just keep listening, keep participating, is a blessing. Yeah. yeah. I think as a mentor, the most challenging piece for me is not trying to impose myself into the relationship mm -hmm. in any way. I think there were times when I had to let you make mistakes, mm -hmm. where I had to let you follow a course that I didn't think was gonna end up going anywhere. Mm -hmm. But if I just constantly told you what to do, mm -hmm. you would never hear from God for yourself. You would never find your own voice and your own way. Um, and that's very hard because I care, mm -hmm. right? And, and to, to sit back when I think um, you could go down a path that would be hard for you is, is tremendously difficult. And also not to center myself mm -hmm. um, in the relationship where there is a temptation just to say, well, all you gotta do is this, and you just need to do mm -hmm. that. And back in my day, I did this and that and this and that. You just do this and um, to do a lot more listening mm -hmm. and asking of questions, but also giving you things to think about where I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm just opening up another perspective and letting you wrestle with that. Mm -hmm. um, that I think that's where the art comes in. Yeah. You know, we're, we're talking about the art of mentoring. I, I think that's where the art comes in, where to um, open up another possibility and when to be quiet and when to allow you to see what might work. And sometimes you did things and it ended up working out great and I didn't think it would. And other times it didn't and we had to talk about that. But either way, um, it was growth, it was learning. But mm -hmm. I, yeah, I see that as one of the biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's funny because I feel like my um, challenge would be similar mm. because it's like, um, what does that look like to, especially later on, I think, in the mentoring relationship, um, allow that space for me as the mentee for that, like, I guess the word would be like differentiation, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think as a mentor, you've um, given a lot of that space, but to like allow myself to like lean into that or like give myself the freedom, yeah, right? To be like, yeah. oh, I can do something differently than Daishan would, <laughs> yes. right? Or I can think differently, or I can go to you for like your thoughts or your counsel on something, but then wrestle with it on my own. And mm -hmm. maybe I do come out with a different conclusion or a different pathway or, or whatever, and that's okay. Um, and then especially, <laughs> I feel like sometimes I have this like, oh, but if I do something wild, then people are gonna be like, oh man, that reflects bad on Daishan. <laughs> and I'm always like, oh no. So I think that's been one of the things for me, like how do I balance um, the ways that you've clearly been a good mentor to me and poured into uh, my life and, and have done a good job um, helping to like shape who I am yeah. while also being like, hey God, like what is um, the, I guess, unique things that you have for me, the path that you have for me in particular mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of helping to, to discern that, um, 
that balance of mm. like, yeah, we seek what is counsel and also um, we discern what's for us and not just say, okay, tell me what to do, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, As you're talking, something else came to mind. I did not expect the issues that people still had with women in ministry. Mm. And seeing you having to navigate that, I was gonna say used to, to this day, it still really, really bugs me. Mm. I remember one time there was a couple visiting our congregation for the first time. And I don't know if you were speaking or just getting up to give announcements. You, you just got to the podium to speak. And I just saw them get up and walk right out of the sanctuary. And it was everything within me not to just run out there and be like, hey, where are you, where are you going? <laughs> you guys got a problem? What's up? <laughs> you know, that it's probably not the best way to make a first impression or represent <laughs> Christ. Um, but yeah, that, that was an education. Um, and it, it still is something that I'm wrestling with and it bothers me that you have to wrestle with it. Um, and I did not expect that because I just, she's gifted. God's gifted her. I mean, let's, but for many people, it's still not that simple of an issue. Mm. Yeah. So mentee, I think the advice that I would give to others is to be um, open to being mentored, um, to be willing to allow God to teach you through other people, to be open to the different forms of mentoring, right? Like Daishan and I, um, especially through my interest in the internship program, entered into a more, say like formal mm -hmm. mentor mentoring agreement. But mentoring happens in a, in a lot of different ways. And I'd say now you said like, oh, what's the right verb? I'd say now we have more of an, I would say more of an informal kind of mentoring yeah, relationship. Yeah. Um, so to be open to that, to, to desire that, to know that um, we're not meant to do things on our own, right? Like mm -hmm. we're the body of, of Christ. Um, we're made for relationship. And, and so to, to be willing to do that and sometimes even um, to be willing to initiate that, to be like, hey, I got some questions. Like, would, we, would you have this conversation with me? Would um, you grab lunch to... to um, I don't know, like go through this, study with me or whatever that looks like. But I think really the big thing would to just be open yeah. to see what God is doing um, in your midst, in the context of relationships, because he works in the, in the midst of relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How we enter into the mentoring relationship is really important. That we don't see it as something that's transactional. That as a mentor, I'm not trying to mentor my mentee to get something from them or to equip them to fill a particular role um, because if that's the case then that's not a mentor mentee relationship that's grooming um, and that isn't always bad but that that is um, not what mentoring is about and i think the best thing a, a mentor could do is prayerfully consider that when, we, when I offer myself as a mentor to someone, I am signing up for a lifelong relationship, mm. right? I, I am si signing up to be tied to this person um, for the rest of our lives. And the mentor-mentee relationship changes. It's not always gonna be the same, but Karen knows that she has someone in me that cares about her unconditionally, doesn't want anything from her, and will tell her the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and, and can be there to listen and to bounce ideas. And uh, I have that in her too, because we spend so much time talking with each other. So it's, there, there's a, that's why I was saying, there's a special category for the mentor-mentee relationship that is unlike others. And so my advice to mentors is to enter in that relationship with that view in mind, um, to prayerfully consider whether or not God is actually calling you to mentor that person, or do you just want to get something from them? Mm. Because you're signing, if you do it right, you're signing up for something that will last the rest of your lives. Mm.